Now let's imagine we're dealing with a gaseous reaction system. Maybe we're measuring partial pressures rather than concentrations. How does changing the partial pressure of a reactant or product gas affect the position of equilibrium? How does all this fit into Le Chatelier's principle? Well, a key simplifying idea, and this is good for appreciating the effect of partial pressures conceptually, is to recall partial pressures are essentially concentrations. We touched on this in discussions of the concentration-based versus the pressure-based equilibrium constant, right? There's a robust mathematical relationship there because conceptually concentration, concentrations and partial pressures of a gas are deeply related via the ideal gas law. And so to understand the effect of partial pressure on the position of equilibrium and how changing a partial pressure will cause a reaction and equilibrium to go forward or out of equilibrium, I should say, to go forward or backward, well, we could just convert everything to concentrations, or all the partial pressures to concentrations, and just think about the concentration-based equilibrium constant and apply what we did on the last slide to understand all this conceptually. The effect of increasing or decreasing a partial pressure is equivalent to adding or removing a reactant in this sense. So the effects are the same uh, as concentrations here. For example, increasing the partial pressure of a reactant will push the system toward products. Decreasing the partial pressure of a reactant will pull the system toward reactants. Those kinds of ideas. Now, what about a change in volume for a gaseous reaction? Well, the key idea here is that changing the system volume uniformly changes all the partial pressures. If I increase the volume of the system, all the partial pressures of the reactants and products go down uniformly, right? Assuming temperature is remaining constant. Likewise, if I decrease the volume of the system, if I compress the system, all the partial pressures go up uniformly. And so the effect on the position of equilibrium here all depends on how many moles of gas we have on the product side relative to the reactant side and our old friend, the change in moles of gas in going from reactant to products. Reactants to products. If the change in moles of gas is positive, increasing the volume will decrease the value of the reaction quotient and the reaction will go forward. If the change in moles of gas is negative, if we have more moles of gas on the reactant side than the product side, increasing the volume will increase the value of Q and the reaction will run in reverse. And in fact, if we have the same number of moles of gas on the reactant and product side, then changing the volume, increasing or decreasing, will have no effect on the value of Q and the system will neither run forward nor backward. In fact, it will remain in equilibrium even as we change the volume. And so the punchline, the upshot of all this, is at the summary bullet here. Increasing volume causes the reaction to run toward the side with more moles of gas. And the opposite, you can imagine, is also true. Decreasing the volume will cause the reaction system to run toward the side with fewer moles of gas. So here's an image that allows us to appreciate what's going on. If, for example, delta N is greater than zero, in other words, little p is bigger than little r, there are more moles of gas on the product side than the reactant side, then when I increase the volume of the system, the reaction system will respond by generating more moles of gas. And it does this by consuming R and producing P, since there are more moles of P on the product side than there are moles of R on the reactant side in the balanced, balanced chemical equation. Finally, let's touch on what happens if we add an inert gas to a chemical system that's in equilibrium. So say we have actually the same reaction that we had from the previous slide. I'm just going to copy and paste this chemical equation so that we have kind of a concrete thing to think about here. We've got R, reactant gas molecules in red, and P, product gas molecules in blue. And say we add an inert gas in green. Maybe it's you know, argon, nitrogen, gas, something inert that doesn't participate in this chemistry at all. It just kind of hangs around and increases the total pressure. So it does have an effect. It increases the total pressure of the system. But does this cause the reaction to run forward or backward? The answer is no. The reason is that the partial pressures 
of R and P are the same. Addition of an inert gas has no effect on the partial pressures of R and P. Think back to Dalton's law, right? Adding a third ideal gas to a system containing ideal gases R and P is not going to affect the partial pressures of R and P at all. For that reason, the value of Q is unaffected and the system remains in equilibrium even though the total pressure has increased. This is key to keep in mind and it simplifies our life, right? It means that adding or removing some inert gas, for example, air, adding or removing air will have no effect on the position of equilibrium of a chemical system that does not involve air as a reactant or product.